Stanford University. The question is, is there, are there ways that we can encourage nerve cells to regrow after insult or injury in ways that will promote healing, actual behavioral and functional healing from an injury to the nervous system? And, you know, the answers are evolving, right? Even right now, research going on right now is changing answers to these questions. Central nervous system damage has always been extremely hard to repair. It's a, it's a paradox in the human nervous system and most mammalian nervous systems that if we get damage to peripheral nerves out here in the arm or the finger or the leg, those peripheral nerves will actually regrow. Those neurons have the ability to regrow, find their targets and make connections with those targets and we can recover a lot of, be a lot of behavioral capabilities for the hands and the extremities after injury. Yet, the same injury in the central nervous system, and by the central nervous system I mean the brain and the spinal cord, that same injury, the nerve cells do not regrow. Once they get cut, they just sit there cut. And the question is, what's the difference between the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system, such that the central nervous system does not regrow most of the time, yet the peripheral nervous system does? Simple question, right? Well, the first kind of really great experiment on that was done by Albert Guayo up at McGill University in Canada back in the 1980s, and he did a very simple thing. He had, he had a mouse with a, uh, a section of the spinal cord, no neurons are regrowing, it's the central nervous system, and he took a piece of peripheral nerve and he just used that to bridge from one, si one side of the cut to the other. And it turned out that the nerve cells started putting out little sprouts and moving across the damaged area along this peripheral nerve, this piece of peripheral nerve, which had the tr huge implication that there must be little chemicals or little molecules in that piece of nerve that encourage the outgrowth of those neurites and the outgrowth of connections across the gap. And some of those molecules that actually encourage growth have been identified, but kind of an unexpected twist of events was that there are molecules sitting there that actually discourage growth. And Martin Schwab and his colleagues at the University of Zurich were really key in, in uh, identifying some of these molecules. So what you really have in the central nervous system is a cocktail of molecules. You've got a bunch of these growth factors, and you've got a bunch of factors or molecules that inhibit growth. And we're still trying to discover what, those, what the various molecular players are. And you know, when we really get that knowledge, the hope is that we'll be able to set the conditions right for regrowth uh, when there's an injury and we'll actually be able to help people recover function. Stanford University.